Hello, and welcome to the Spokane Technical College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Kelsey, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping announcements. Your cameras and microphones are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of multiple different sessions happening over the course of today and tomorrow, so please be sure to check out the schedule on the website for additional sessions. The presentation is also being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Spokane. I'd like to now turn it over to our first presenter, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Thank you, my fellow Kelsey. All right, well, thank you all for joining us tonight. My name is Kelsey Kaplan. I'm a senior admissions coordinator here with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, or UNLV. UNLV is a large public state institution. We're a tier one research institution located in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. We have about 31,000 students on campus and our average class size sits at about 33 students. Uh, so although we are a large campus, if you visited the campus, you would recognize that it does feel a lot smaller. And we do have a strong sense of campus community here at UNLV as well. We are the only university in the city of Las Vegas, so we're very interconnected with our city and community. UNLV is ranked as the most diverse institution in the country, so diversity is something that is very important to UNLV and its students. The city of Las Vegas is a very diverse city, and that transcends right into the university. We have over 50 cultures represented and students from 86 different countries at UNLV, uh, so you're bound to find someone and interact with somebody who has a very different life experience than you. Being on a, such a diverse college campus gives you the opportunity to engage with people who may have had some different experiences than you and taking that out into the real world is a very good skill that our UNLV graduates are able to have. Our diversity also stems because of our hospitality management program. Our hospitality management program is ranked number one in the US and number two in the entire world. So we do have a lot of students from outside of the United States that come to UNLV for our hospitality management program specifically. It is a great, well-renowned program. If you're not interested in hospitality, UNLV has over 300 programs to choose from. Um, so there's a lot of options. Being the only university, we really do serve our economy in all different industries in Las Vegas. We have a really strong school of engineering and um, that has been jumping up in the rankings over the last several years. We also have a top-ranked nursing school. A UNLV does not have any impacted programs, so you're able to pursue any of our degrees within four years. We also have an honors college program as well, which is a small selected group of students in our university system. So if you're interested in the honors college, you could apply to them separately. UNLV also has a lot of graduate student opportunities. If you wanna to go to medical school, law school, dental school, we have all of those programs on our campus as well. So you're exposed to those as an undergraduate student. UNLV is a top tier research institution. So you have the opportunity to engage with, in research with your faculty as early as your freshman year. Uh, this picture right here is a robot that our students and faculty created and designed at UNLV. We have been um, invited to compete in the DARPA Department of Defense Robotics competition for several years. So robotics is a really strong program on our campus. UNLV also provides a lot of opportunities for internships and jobs while students are in school. Being in a growing economy in Las Vegas, our students are able to get jobs and internships very easily and also go to school at the same time. We have over 400 clubs and organizations, so I'm talking a lot about academics and getting internships, but you can have fun on campus too, and there's plenty to do. We also are division one in sports, so we compete in the Mountain West division, and we give free tickets to all of our student home games. And so this past year, we have the UNLV team playing at the brand new Raiders Stadium, and UNLV students are able to go to those UNLV football games in that brand new professional stadium, which is really fun for our students. If you are interested in applying to UNLV, we have a very transparent admissions process. We're looking for a 3.0 core academic GPA in 13 academic units or a 1120 SAT or a 22 ACT. We are test optional, so as long as you have that GPA, you will not be expected to submit SAT or ACT if you do not have them. We also do accept transfer students with a 2.5 transfer GPA in 24 transferable units. If you are a running start student, we do accept running start credit. Uh, you still apply as a freshman student. 
We are a WUI school. So if you have a 3.25 unweighted GPA, you can automatically qualify for the WUI discount, which brings your tuition down to about $13,000 a year. It's a great value for a four-year top tier institution. And you can get additional scholarships and financial aid to stack on top of this as well. Our application is open right now. If you're a senior and you're getting ready to apply, our priority deadline for scholarships and financial aid is November 15th, but we do rolling admissions and accept students all the way through June. If you wanna learn more about our campus, I know this is a really brief session. Uh, we do offer a full extended version of this on our website virtually. We also are back in person and offer in-person tours and open houses um, coming up this October as well. Um, so that leads me to the end of my session. And if you do have any questions, you can find my contact information on this website below and you reach out to me here in this chat box. Have a great night. Thanks, Kelsey. Next up, we are going to hear from Idaho State University. Perfect. Thank you so much. My name is Jessica and I am with Idaho State University. We are located in Pocatello, Idaho, or in the southeast corner of the state. Um, a little bit more about us. We have about 12,000 students on our campus. Um, we are also located um, really outdoors. You're about two and a half hours away from Yellowstone National Park and two hours north of Salt Lake City. So that might give you a little bit more um, knowledge of where exactly we're located in southeast Idaho. We offer, we have over 250 um, degrees and certificates with ISU. So we have everything from music, English, accounting, um, all the way to nursing, as well as career and technical programs. Some of those programs, um, they're very hands-on. They can include welding, diesel, auto mechanics. And so these are more of our short-term courses that we have. Um, and it's a really great way um, to be able to do that. We also have about 150 different clubs and organizations. One of the best parts that I love about our campus is that it's very easy to get involved with. We have tons of clubs um, in each one of our programs. So it's really easy to be able to have that connection with your students and peers in the same academic field as you. We also have social group life. And so you can be part of those organizations as well as student government. We also have different organizations because we're very outdoorsy, as I said, we're by Yellowstone National Park. Um, for example, this weekend, our outdoor recreation is going to Yellowstone and they're spending the night out there. We also have skiing and snowboarding just 20 minutes away from our campus. So it's a great opportunity to be in a different environment and really be able to explore the outdoors and everything that we have to offer. We are um, also a NCAA division one. We have 13 different teams um, from football and basketball from uh, men's and women's basketball, as well as soccer, softball on women's and um, cross country and track for both men's and women's. So it's really easy to get involved. And of course we have intramural sports as well, if you're not um, playing competitively. We do offer housing on our campus. It is not required for freshmen, but of course I think it's a great opportunity for you to be involved with that. We have traditional dorm rooms as well as suite style. We also have an honors program. And within our honors program, you will be living with that cohort of students. Um, you can apply for free uh, once you are accepted to ISU. We also have what we call a Bengal Bridge program. And this is where in the summer you can get kind of started earlier, take some credits beforehand to get that college feel before you really go full in um, for your fall semester. So time is really easy. We do have a $50 application fee. We do not have any essays and we do not require any reference letters. So that is something to keep in mind. You will just then need to send your uh, official transcripts from your high school um, transfer students. You can send those. If you are doing running start, we will not need those transcripts until you're done graduated from high school. And we are now test optional. So I know it says that we do require those, but if you did take them, it's a great way to send them to us because that will help you with math and English placements with that. 
So for, we are a WUI school as well. And so to qualify for WUI to be eligible, if you have above a 3.0 GPA, that can bring your tuition down to about $12,000 a year. You can see this. We also have some more information on our website if you are wanting that to be a little bit more specific in that. Our priority deadline for those scholarships is February 15th. All you have to do is apply as the steps I mentioned before and you can be eligible for those. One of the things that I really encourage students to do that's most important is to visit campus uh, to make sure that you are creating the right environment for you, you're finding the right environment for you when you attend college. Uh, we are accepting visits right now, so you can come to our campus, do a full tour, uh, meet with faculty and staff in your uh, program that you are interested in. Um, this QR code right here, you can go ahead and scan that. We will also be having a very large virtual event on October 30th. And so this is a great opportunity for you to come see what it's like, um, be able to interact with different people and organizations within our college without having to come to campus. But um, so yeah, that's a great start for you for that. Um, and this is my information. For those of you in the Spokane area, my office is actually in Coeur d'Alene, so I'm very close. So we can always meet in person. Um, and this is my contact information here at the bottom. Again, with this QR code, if you go ahead and scan it, it will be able to give you a little bit more information about me and how to contact me and go from there. So with that, I think that is everything. So thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Next up, we are going to hear from Wartburg College. Hi, everyone. My name is Hannah Hagee, and I am a regional admissions counselor with Wartburg College. Just getting my PowerPoint up here. Awesome. So I work with students from the entire Western US and just want to give you a little bit of information about Wartburg. So we are located out of state. We're in Northeast Iowa, so over in the Midwest. We're a small private liberal arts college, so we actually only have about 1,500 students on our campus. We really want those small class sizes, one-on-one -on -one relationships with your faculty and staff. We want our students to be valuable and contributing when contributing members to our campus environment and the world at large. So we have a lot of different opportunities for our students. Academically, we do have over 50 different majors. Our most popular are business, biology, elementary education, psychology, and music therapy. Um, but you have a lot of different options to choose from depending on the path that you want to take. And then I always like to point out our four for one academic calendar. So for Wartburg students who would take four classes fall term, four classes winter term, and then we have a May term, which is our last three and a half week of the school year. If you're on campus, you take one class for about three hours a day, but a lot of our students will choose to study abroad during that May term because it's led by a professor and it's a class and you go with a large group of students and Wartburg students tend to be over involved and have, leave it, have a hard time leaving campus for a full semester. So this May term opportunity is a really great option for them during their college experience. I'm not going to read all of these numbers here on the slide, but just some, um, some statistics that we're proud of. I do like to point out our 82% medical school placement rate, which is more than double the national average. Our biology program at Warburg is very rigorous and definitely catered towards students who are going pre-med or who are doing our three plus one accelerated nursing program. We also have students from 61 countries and 38 states, so we're proud of our diversity on campus as you learn in the classroom and throughout the Warburg community. In terms of student involvement, uh, we are a division three school, so we can't give out athletic scholarships, but our students do still compete at a very high level. We have 24 different athletic teams and of our 1500 students over 700 of them participate in athletics on campus. We did also complete two multi-million dollar renovations to our wellness center on campus, and we now have an additional two-story weight room that features the elite form technology, which is used mostly by professional athletes and some division one schools were the only division three school in the nation that has that technology now. So that's very exciting for our student athletes and for our students in our new health and human performance major on campus. We also have a lot of opportunities for music involvement. So we do have over 18 music ensembles on campus and we do offer music scholarships. So if you um, are passionate about music, whether that's band or choir or orchestra, you can audition for a music scholarship up to $6,000 per year that would be tacked onto your um, scholarship and financial aid package. And then we do have a large variety of student organizations as well. So if you're interested in something that's based in politics or service or leadership, academic success, there's a lot of different opportunities for you. And you can always make your own organization as well. 
In terms of the application process, we try to make it as easy as possible. So our application is always free. Uh, you can complete it within 10 or 15 minutes online on our own website, or you can add Workbird to the Common application. We are test optional, so you do not need a test score for admissions or scholarship purposes. And our application is rolling and non-binding. So there's no deadlines in terms of getting that application in, and it doesn't tie you into anything. So if you're at least 3% interested in Workbird, I would always encourage you to apply so that you don't miss out on any important information and we can stay in touch and support you through your college search process. All of our accepted students do receive automatic merit-based scholarships. This year's seniors are receiving $26 to $31,000 immediately upon acceptance. And then you can qualify for additional scholarships on top of that. So if you have a 3.5 GPA or higher, you would also be invited to attend an on-campus scholarship day. We also have departmental visit days for all of our academic departments that have $1,000 scholarships. We mentioned our music scholarships earlier, and then we also have legacy and alumni scholarships. Those are kind of some of the highlights, um, but this is also case by case for the additional scholarships that you may qualify for. So we just encourage you to stay in touch through that process. In terms of some next steps, we just invite you to stay in touch and most importantly to visit campus. So we are open for in-person visits. Uh, we also do have a virtual visit option. So if you're looking at out-of-state schools, um, I'd always welcome you to do a virtual visit first if you want to learn a little bit and then hope that after that you, you're still interested and you want to come visit campus in person. I also like to mention that your senior year, once you apply and you're accepted for Warburg, you do qualify for our fly-in program. So Warburg will reimburse up to $350 $350 of eligible travel expenses for you to come and visit campus so that you can sit on the class, take a tour, connect with a coach or a director or a faculty member, really get a feel for Warburg would be a good fit for you. So stay connected. You'll see our contact information here on the screen. And I just wish you the best as you continue your college search. Thank you, Hannah. Next up, we are gonna hear from Temple University Japan Campus. Yep, thank you everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm an admissions counselor here at Temple University Japan campus. Uh, quick introduction to our institution. Uh, so Temple University originates in Philadelphia. Uh, it's a huge uh, public comprehensive institution on the east coast of the United States, around 40,000 undergraduate students. And Temple University Japan campus, or TUJ as we like to call it, is simply an extension of that school based out in Tokyo, Japan. So we're teaching the same uh, level, the same standard as our main campus in Philadelphia. Uh, we teach entirely in English. So you don't have to be uh, fluent in Japanese when you arrive here at the university. And you're working towards a Temple University degree, exactly the same as those students are over in Philadelphia. As I mentioned, uh, we have a Philadelphia campus, the Tokyo campus where I'm based. Uh, Temple also has a campus in Rome, Italy. So it's a very global outlooking institution. You can come and do your full four-year undergraduate degree with us here at Temple University Japan, um, but you can also uh, decide to split your time over the three campuses as well. Maybe do a study abroad semester uh, at another Temple campus while you're studying with us in Japan. Now, in terms of our uh, Tokyo location, we are very lucky to be located right in the heart of the city. Um, it's a great vantage point to go and explore uh, various parts of Tokyo, and we're very lucky that uh, Tokyo itself has, has the world's uh, safest and most reliable public transport system, specifically the train network. Uh, so I do encourage all of our students to take advantage of this and go and explore this amazing city. Now, in terms of your, your student experience here at TUJ, um, I mentioned how we, we are similar to our main campus in Philadelphia. Uh, the main difference being is the size, whereas they have 40,000 students here, we have 1,400. So a much smaller campus, a very close-knit supportive community, uh, your average class size here is going to be around 19 to 20 students per class, so they are very interactive. And in addition to your, your regular tutorial or lecture style classes, we do like to add a practical experience to your education. Uh, one of the main components of this is our internship program. So students, um, all students have the opportunity to do an internship uh, for uh, one semester, uh, working uh, credits towards their major. It could be working for a Japanese company, it could be going to work for an international office like a company like Amazon. But again, this is a great experience to get um, uh, uh, knowledge of the field you want to work in after you graduate, as well as start that networking process, which is vital for when you are um, looking for jobs. Um, 
and after classes, we have an extensive activities and club program. So uh, our students not only get the option to explore various parts of Tokyo, but we'll do various cultural workshops. We'll go and visit uh, the northern parts of Japan to go skiing, for example. Maybe we'll go down to Kyushu in the south and visit a hot spring. Uh, so we we're really trying to offer that immersive experience in addition to your high quality education. We have a very diverse student body of around um, 65 different nationalities uh, studying here with us at TUJ. Around 40% of our students are from the United States, so coming directly from high school or transferring in to complete their undergraduate degree here at Tokyo. Uh, that diversity is also reflected in our faculty body with faculty from all over the world uh, teaching here, including a number of professors who come over from the main campus each year to teach uh, at the Japan campus. Uh, now, being a small college campus, our focus here is on 10 undergraduate majors, uh, mainly in the liberal arts field with, with programs like international business studies, international affairs, communication studies, and of course, Japanese being very popular on campus. You can double major, you can major minor. Um, a very popular combination might be something like international business studies major with a minor in Japanese. Um, we have the, actually the oldest foreign university campus in Japan. We've been here for nearly 40 years. Uh, but in 2019, we reached a huge milestone, moving into a brand new campus uh, in Setagaiku. Uh, this is a purpose-built facility for TUJ, uh, and we're now located across the road from a Japanese institution, uh, Showa Women's uh, University, uh, which we've established this collaborative partnership with now. Um, this move has helped us to uh, create what's been dubbed as Japan's first global campus, with our students uh, being able to share facilities, uh, not only at TUJ, but over at Showa Women's University as well, um, so again, a, a unique campus environment in Japan, and we're looking forward to see how this grows further as we settle into our new campus space. Uh, one of the big advantages of us being a smaller branch campus is we can offer a lower tuition fee. Our annual tuition comes in at approximately 15,000 US dollars per year. Uh, you can apply to use your FAFSA here in the Japan campus with us. Uh, we do have a number of merit-based scholarships that all, all incoming students can apply for, and it is possible to work part-time in Japan. Uh, we do have numbers, uh, a number of jobs available on campus, as well as students able to work off campus in retail restaurants and English language tutoring, for, uh, for example. Uh, the application process is very simple. Uh, our application now is open for the fall uh, semester. It is rolling admissions. Um, once you complete your, uh, your admissions application, we will send you a decision in approximately four weeks. Uh, your application uh, consists of your application form, which includes your personal statement. Uh, we will need the transcripts from the schools you've attended. Uh, we are test optional, so SATs and ACTs are not required for your application. However, if you've taken either of those tests and you wish to submit them, we'll happily add them to your application. And again, once we've completed all those documents, uh, we will send you a decision in approximately four weeks. Uh, we've got a number of events going online at the moment to help you connect with the institution. A number of webinars we have, uh, for example, next week we'll have our uh, sample lesson for an economics program. We've just finished up our admissions 101 webinar. Do check out our website to see recordings of the ones you may have missed and sign up for the ones that are up and coming. Um, thank you very much for your time and uh, um, I look forward to hopefully uh, speaking with some of you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Next up, we are going to hear from Carroll College. Uh, my name is uh, Jesus Paro Gutierrez. I'm a 2020 graduate of Carroll College. And I'm also an admissions counselor for uh, the Western part of the United States. Carroll College, we are a small private liberal arts college based out of Helena, Montana, uh, which is also the capital of Montana. We are about three hours from Yellowstone, as well as Glacier National Park with uh, Great Divide Ski Hill, about 30 minutes away, just north. We have the Missouri River, so world-class fishing, as well as tubing, if that is what you are in. Um, academic excellence. So we are a liberal arts foundation to our education with an average class size of about 16 and a student population of about 1,200. Uh, we have over 40 majors available for undergraduates, and we have three post grad programs available. Our bread and butter when it comes to Carroll College is our nursing program, which has a 100% pass rate of the NCLEX, as well as our pre-med track at Carroll. We have an 85% acceptance rate into medical school uh, compared to the national average of about 42. 
we here at Carroll College have this crazy ideology that you're actually going to learn better if you are getting a hands-on practical approach to your education. Um, that is also going to be supplemented by lectures as well as textbooks. But for example, if you look at that top picture, that is our student undergraduate research festival. We have one of five undergraduate institutions in the entire nation that allow for undergraduate research proposal, research, publication, and presentation. Stuff that you are doing at the graduate level that we give you the opportunity to do at the undergraduate level. Uh, we have various opportunities with uh, global learning. So you are able to take trips around uh, the globe and still get credits for it as well. Our school motto is non scole servite, not for school, but for life. We say that once you come to Carroll, you are part of the Carroll family, the tight knit community where professors legitimately care about you. I like to say that coming out of the most impersonal times of our lives with Rona, it's nice to know that there's an individual that cares, or there's my bad, there is an institution that cares about the individual. We have various outdoor opportunities available through our camp program, which stands for Carol's Adventure Mountaineering Program. Um, they take various trips throughout the year, whether it be fishing trips, canoeing trips, hiking trips, but it's also a place where if you want to rent out equipment, you can to enjoy what Montana has to offer. Campus like that is over 300 events put on a year, or my bad, excuse me, a school year with the State of an Art Theater that puts on about four productions every school year. We are an NAIA school and we are able to offer athletic scholarships. On the bottom right hand side, you are able to see some of the uh, sports that we have. Students live on campus for at least three years, and for that fourth year, actually 80% of our students do end up choosing to live on campus. Catholic identity. So we are a Catholic diocesan college. However, we are ecumenical, which means we are accepting of all faiths and you do not have to be Catholic or Christian to attend our institution. Our approach to faith is they meet you where you are approach. So if you want to get involved in your faith or grow in it, you have the opportunity through retreats, pilgrimages, and other service trips available. If that is not your jam, no worry, we are gonna support you in whatever decision uh, you decide to go with. Affordability. So our merit scholarship range is from 16 to 23,000. And like I said, that is your initial scholarship you get coming out of high school for basically all the good work that you did in high school. I do encourage you guys to apply now. There is no application stream. We are on the phone. Um, we are also test optional, so if you weren't able to take either the SAT or ACT, or maybe you don't want to tell us those scores, no worries, you can still apply. November 1st is our direct entry uh, nursing deadline, as well as our early action deadline. So if you want to have something to brag about by the time Thanksgiving comes around, you are uh, able to get a decision um, if you apply by November 1st. So like I said, my name is Jesus Parra Gutierrez, the admissions counselor for the Western part of the United States. Thank you. Thanks, Jesus. Now that we've heard from all five schools that were with us this evening, I'm gonna invite our five representatives to join me to answer just a few questions for you before we wrap up for the evening. So that first question I have is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll start um, with University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and just go in the same order in which you presented. Uh, my advice would be that the process is your own process. So make sure you're doing things for yourself and not because of your peers or anyone else around you. You stole mine, that's what I was gonna say too. <laughs> um, that and tour all as many colleges as you can because after listening to us, being able to go on a campus and really get that feeling can really help you decide that this is where I really wanna go. And so, yeah. I would say try to connect with students during your college search. So going and touring campuses, hopefully you'll have a tour guide, but try to connect with general students walking down the sidewalk or um, whoever you're seeing in the dining hall and kind of learn about them and their experience and see if you identify with who they are and the culture that they're a part of on that campus and if it'd be a good fit for you. 
Uh, yeah, really just reiterating what's been said already, uh, taking advantage of as many resources as you can to connect with institutions that you're interested with, whether it's a campus visit, you're connecting with a student, you're, you're, you're um, frequently looking at their social media pages. There's so many outlets now and where you can get information on institutions uh, and just staying organized with that information. Because as you've heard from each college today, we have different deadlines, different application processes. So making sure that you're, you're being organized and tracking those dates. Uh, and you're not getting confused and mixed up with uh, different deadlines for different schools as well. Yeah, ditto to everything that everyone just said. Uh, but also one thing I do recommend is, yeah, touring that school and touring, I mean, is a bigger school fit for you? Is a smaller fit, school fit for you? Really knowing who you are as an individual and seeing where you can be successful and comfortable. At the end of the year, at the end of the day, it's a four-year investment in yourself. Awesome. My second question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? UNLV is an exciting place to be, a, a big growing city and economy and school. Uh, so that is what I think is the best part right now. I would say with Idaho State University, it is really having the opportunity to get involved and being able to explore the area. And so that's a huge opportunity for you. For Warburg, I would say the May term schedule is a really cool opportunity that's maybe a little bit different that all schools don't have. So if you want to travel abroad um, or maybe you want to visit the Warburg Castle in Germany that we're named after, that's a really cool opportunity to, to be able to do. Yeah, TUJ, uh, we offer the unique opportunity to study for a full American undergraduate degree in the middle of Tokyo, Japan. Uh, one thing I want people to remember about Carol is that we really value a hands-on approach to your education. We believe that you're actually going to learn better if you're doing the real life practical work rather than the hypothetical work. Great. And one last question before we close out. What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, I'm just going to go with every school is different. So it's important that you realize there's not one blanket approach to every single college application and talking and getting information from the schools you're interested in is going to be the best way to make sure you're doing what you need to do. I would say that you don't have to do it alone. All of us are here to help you and you can ask us any questions whatsoever because as we just mentioned, it all is all completely different. So let us know what questions you have and we can be here to really help you. I would say there's a lot of myths or misconceptions around especially like cost of tuition. So just remember that it's not a blanket statement to say that in state or out of state is is different for all schools or public versus private or wooey versus not wooey. Really look at those individual schools because you can't make that statement about one and think it applies to all of them. Yeah, and similar to what's just been said, um, a lot of students do think that studying overseas is a, a, an unaffordable option. Um, but I think not just at TUJ, but other institutions overseas as well, uh, you'll be surprised at the uh, tuition rates, the costs, the number of external uh, scholarship opportunities there are to go and study overseas as well. Uh, so definitely encourage students to look at those options uh, as well. Uh, one thing that I like to say is that your test scores and your GPA don't define you or your intellect. And we do care about who you are as an individual. So we wanna know everything you have done in the past as well. Great, thank you all so much for sharing. Um, and hopefully whoever is watching has learned a lot um, and can value that advice uh, from our representatives. So we wanna thank everyone for joining us. This is the end of the session. When you close out of this window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We do encourage you to check back at the schedule to sign up for more sessions happening tomorrow evening. You will be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Spokane. Thank you all so much. Thank you to our wonderful presenters and I hope everyone has a great evening.